Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Alex Murnoff from College of Charleston, and he will be talking on the algebra's root technical systems, the truth. Examples which actually I can leave to Professor Paul to talk. So quick, easy examples. So if you think about rotations on the plane, they form a rotation, say, around the origin, or translation. Um, now, I quickly <coughs> want to connect the groups to the algebras. Uh, one thing which we noticed is that the tangent space of any Lie group uh, has an algebra structure. So the structures are called now Lie algebras. Algebra basically is just a vector space with some kind of a problem. Uh, <coughs> so for Sneak himself is actually called this um, groups of infinitesimal transformations so groups of infinitesimal transformations all right um, so if we have a Lie group we have a Lie algebra so now let me get to the definition of Lie algebra a Lie algebra is a vector space with multiplication usually denoted by this bracket and cold bracket and uh, two axioms uh, 
are satisfied, anti commutativity. It's easy calculation that if you have essentially a squared to zero, then it follows that AB equals to negative BA. So it's cancel that. And Jacobi identity. So it's the term identity. So one gets many examples during the following. Start with any associated algebra, say you can just take real numbers or the more interesting say three by three matrices over real. <coughs> and then consider this bracket A B minus B A is this. So then it's now there's a calculation to see that what you get is a Lie algebra. Now, in fact, in some sense, any Lie algebra can be obtained in this way. Or specifically, any Lie algebra can be realized inside of a social algebra. Known as one very big group of Lie algebras. Alright, so I want to go back to that result, the theory that a tangent space at identity element is a real algebra. And uh, I want to discuss this correspondence. And the, sort of <coughs> the very fundamental fact is that correspondence, you know, if you go from group to algebra, it's a functorial correspondence. Uh, just slightly to elaborate on the meaning of that. Uh, if you have any homomorphism between groups, you also obtain corresponding homomorphisms on sorry, I think yes. If you have any homomorphism between two groups, then you get a homomorphism between two Lie algebras. So I guess I need to explain this notation. This is a Lie algebra associated to the first group, this is a Lie algebra associated to the second. Um, and then we can consider a functor from category of uh, Lie groups to a category of finite dimensional Lie algebras. Uh, so here I have a new <coughs> New object, new theory of the story. Uh, there is also a generalization uh, of Lie groups called symmetric spaces. I think that these are due, due to Eli Cartan. But the definition which I'm giving you here is not by Cartan, it's by laws, author laws. I think Cartan's original definition was a quotient of a Lie group by certain compact subgroup. This, is, this definition is more algebraic, so it really uh, fits nicely into the framework which I have in mind. So anyway, a symmetric space is a real manifold where at every point x you have a map, differential map. Think about the symmetry, it's also called symmetry is this map. So it's the square of this map gives you identity, then we have this we have this sort of law of composition of these maps. And uh, X, you know, to define S of X we fix X. X is the only isolated uh, X is an isolated fixed point of this map. So this is a nice example of easily visualized. A sphere in a free dimensional space is a symmetric space. You just, you just consider, I guess, symmetries around the weights to the origin. Um, what's interesting about this example is not a legal. So there are symmetric spaces of the number. 
Yes. 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 Makes sense more together with this example. If you start with any group and we define a symmetry at every point x in this way, you get a symmetric space. So every Lie group is a symmetric space, but not vice versa as the first example shows. And uh, my third example here is more interesting. If you have an involution in a group, by involution I just mean uh, a map of period. So not map. Uh, group homomorphism, homomorphism of period 2. So if sigma is evolution of group G, then uh, this set of points forms a symmetric space inside of B group G. And um, part time proof generalization of a leaf theorem for symmetric spaces if you start with any <coughs> space now fix any point so all here is any point of M just fix it let's see the tangent space and the tangent space uh, has a structure of integral system so now I want to talk about political systems So a triple system, unlike algebra, a triple system has a trilinear product. And uh, one easy way to get a trilinear product is start with the algebra, consider double commutator. Okay? So this will be trilinear. And then observe that this trilinear product satisfies the following conditions. So that's sort of three identities here. This is this falls right away from anti commutativity this is Jacobi identity and well, this this one is an extra identity but what it says is that the left multiplication by B acts as a derivation for this operation so now you can use this three identities as definition and we will get the Concept of elliptical system. So elliptical system T is a vector space with trilinear map which satisfies these three identities. So the next thing I want to explain is how elliptical systems related to Lie algebras. So we have we see some connections. Any Lie algebra is a elliptical system. Okay. Uh, well. The fact is that uh, every elliptical system can be embedded into the algebra and sort of to give you sort of very to explain the regular way of doing it, uh, I need to recall the notion of grading. In fact, what I need here is Z2 grading. Okay? So uh, a Lie algebra is called Z2 graded if it's decomposed into the direct sum of two subspaces. So 0 and 1 are elements of Z2. Okay. And what the requirement is that when we multiply subspaces, this is requirement. So L sub i times a product with L sub j is part of L of i plus j. <coughs> so this is an example. Try to color code it like this. So you see, consider two by two matrices. Okay? So SL2 of R is the set of all matrices with trace zero. Okay? So you see this R and negative R here. This forms a Lie algebra. It is a Lie sub algebra of two by two matrix algebra. And um, Z2 grading here is just consists of the following parts. So L0 are diagonal matrices from L, and L1 are 
is of that number of matrices. And now back to I'm trying to get an example of legible system, right? But notice that <coughs> this is an easy population which I want to discuss. So there's this easy check that L1 is going to be a legible system. Okay? Notice that L1 is not a subalgebra of L because L1 product of L1 product with L1 sends us to L0, right? But it is a legible system, right? Because L1 and L1 gives us L0, and then L0 times L1 gives L1. Right? So L1 is closed under this operation and it is a legible system. So in particular, this off diagonal matrices give you an example of legible system. So, there is a theorem due by Jacobson is that every lead triple system can be realized <coughs> as L1 of, for some Lie algebra. Yeah. So, this is. construction. Um, to construct a Lie algebra out of vertical system, okay, so think about, so we start with T, so we have one ingredient, right? We have L1, we need to construct L0, and then to define the operations here. So to construct L0, we do the following. We consider the tensor product of properties of T and we just need to get rid of some identity, some elements. Okay? Then one checks that you know this defines the structure of Lie algebra on the surface space. Okay. And two other formulas gives you the way how the rest of the products. So this is a Lie algebra and uh, L1. I mean, and this, and this is gradient, L0. So it's. This must. Well, this is not the way Jacobson constructed. He constructed this a little bit different. It's a one easy way to, to make this construction. So this. Algebra so J, J, J was a nickname of, nickname of Jefferson. So this is a zero graded Lie algebra, and let's see, correspondence you know, going from triple system to this Lie algebra is also factorial, which means for each li, li, each triple system homomorphism, you have a Lie algebra homomorphism, a graded Lie algebra. Other way to? Other way. The transformation? From Jacob's. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Yes, 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 yes. If you have, um, if you have graded morphisms between two such Lie algebras, the restriction into one component gives you a system. function which we get in this way. So we have a function from multiple systems to the algebras, graded the algebras. It's a very nice function. It's full and faithful, meaning that um, on the morphism side, you know, for each fixed triple system T and S, so that the relation between homomorphism of triple systems and homomorphism of the algebra it's, it's in fact isomorphism. So morphisms go bijectively from one place to another. Uh, sometimes such functors are called indebtedness because 
what it means is that the category of retrieval systems is embedded or can be realized as a sort of full subcategory of uh, the category of graded the objects. Okay? And with such functor, uh, there's a natural question, okay. Well, it's not, it's not an equivalence functor, meaning that there will be some Lie algebras which are not coming from the triple systems, okay? So you have some image smaller than uh, this category. So the question is, well, the question which I have, how one can describe intrinsically these Lie algebras which are coming from the triple systems, okay? So that's a question which I thought was interesting and um, this is the answer. Another one called the Slitable System Detector, or Lee Detector for short. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you have a zero graded Lee algebra, it is in the image of the functor, if and only if it satisfies the following conditions. So it has to be generated by a one component. And then, uh, the second cohomology, the second graded cohomology group from L to any trivial module has to be zero. Actually, sort of a more recent development, you also can just describe it, you can replace this cohomology group with homology group of L, second graded homology group. So now we have, I just want to discuss some additional functors. So look, the categories which we discussed so far, we have Lie algebras, we have a Lie functor going from Lie groups to Lie algebras, and we have this Jacobson functor going from multiple systems to Lie algebras. In fact, It is natural to modify this vertical arrow by considering this as going into graded Lie algebras. Okay. Just simply, this functor is, has nicer properties if we consider graded algebras instead of just category of functors. Okay. Now, if, mo if we modify this category, if we start considering Z2 graded algebras, we need to modify also to change this category, which groups are we looking at here. So the groups, the Lie groups which I want to consider are Lie groups with involution. So we consider an fixed, an fixed involution in the Lie group and that's the object of this category. And then morphisms of this category are Lie group morphisms which uh, preserve the fixed involution. So we have yes, so two ACs categories of graded algebras. Yes. So we also talked about category of symmetric spaces and this functor which was produced by Cartan. And of course we want to complete it. So there is a, another vertical arrow going from symmetric spaces to big groups with emotions which are due to those or those. Okay. Now notice that so far what we did we sort of described we have some information about this functor. Right? We know it's a nice functor, we know what the image is. So this is sort of a natural trick at least theory if you have something for Lie algebras want to try to see what you have on the Lie group side. Okay. So what I want to show you the next is to be able to do, you know, I want to have answers about embedding of symmetric spaces into Lie groups. Um, I would like to have an equivalences here. So this Connections, my horizontal levels need to be modified. If I want to have equivalence between 
is it to grade the clear algebras and groups with involutions I need to restrict, I need to here to restrict myself to connected, simply connected three groups. Okay, then I have an equivalence of categories on the side. In the same way, here I will have an equivalence between symmetric spaces, connected, simply connected symmetric spaces with a fixed point and elliptical systems. So then I have the same, well not the same, similar description of the functor of the loss, losses functor is that a Lie group with an evolution is obtained from a symmetric space if it satisfies these three conditions. G is generated by G sigma. G sigma is the space I defined many slides ago in this steps. Symmetric space, you know, I remember it was an example when I said for start with a uh, Lie group with involution that this is a symmetric space sitting inside of it. So group G is generated by G sigma and then uh, invariant segment the homology group of G is here. Thank you very much for